All right, Edie, I Amin. Mean. How's it going? Hey, man, it's going good, man. I can't complain. How about you? Good. Good, man. Grinding, hey. man. You good. know. Same uh, here. Glad to have you. Glad we can get this done for you, man. Yeah, yeah. definitely, man. You know, I mean, your uh, history in hip-hop is, is very extensive, man, and, uh, you know, very significant to hip-hop and everything that happened, you know, through, through uh, you know what I'm saying, your time and everything you did, man. So I'm just glad to have you. Thank you. Glad to be here. For sure, for sure, man. Well, I thought I would jump into some of the kind of big kind of news that came out, man. I don't know how real it is or not, but, you know, uh, RBX did an interview with Art of Dialogue. And in this interview, he actually said that Tupac got jumped into Mob Pyru. Is there any truth to that? No, never happened. Never happened. Okay. Not at all. Let me ask you a question. Do you think... All your viewers, I propose a question to them. Do they think Tupac was the kind of individual that would allow himself to be jumped so he can be in a gang? And no disrespect to anybody that lived that life and that's been, you know, jumped in. I understand it. I've been out here long enough to understand the culture and, and, and why they believe in what they believe in. Tupac was a different individual. There's no scenario on this planet that would allow that to happen, or he would allow that to happen. So, no. Now, he was tied to the mob, though, I mean, you know, which, I mean, I think is pretty well documented. He was signed to death row. He was signed to death row, absolutely. He was signed to death row, and he was loyal to the people that threw him a lifeline when he was sitting in a cell. And, um, you know... Just trying to f figure it out. Okay. Uh, how do you feel about people saying that Tupac shouldn't have joined Death Row and that, like, Suge and everything that came with it was, like, a bad influence on him? Opinions are like assholes. Everybody got their opinion. And they have a right to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Tupac did what he did in this history. He made history. It's a part of history. Definitely, definitely, man. I, I mean, do you agree with that, or do you feel like it was like... My opinion really, really really, doesn't matter whether I agree with it or not. At the time, obviously, I agreed with it because I went with him. You know what I mean? We had a whole situation with Interscope that we was working on, and that came to an abrupt end as soon as Pac was like, yo, I'm getting out of jail and I'm going to death row. And we was all like, let's go. So you were on Interscope too with him? We was about to do a deal with Interscope. Like I said, we were working on something. Yeah, we had did a whole album and the whole shit. Okay. So this was, okay, so when he was in jail, you guys were still, you guys were working. Absolutely. Prior to him going to jail. Okay. Did any of that music ever come out? It's all over the internet. You can find it. That whole album is on the internet. Okay. Yeah. Real Pac Outlaw fans know what it is, and they, they know that project is, it got leaked a long time ago. Well, there's been so much stuff leaked, you know what I mean? I don't, you know, I don't You're right know about that, what. brother. You're right about that. Yeah, it's, it's been a lot, man. Okay, so I, I thought we'd probably kind of take it back, man, and, and, you know what I'm saying, to where, you know, you first grew up. You know what I'm saying? Where, where'd you grow up at? I grew up in a couple of different places. I started off in New York City, Brooklyn, New York, to be exact. Um, and then I moved. I moved to the Midwest for a little while eventually landed in the West Coast. And that was a part of me growing up, that, you know, a little bit of the South Atlanta. What was growing up like for you? Um, growing up for me was, you know, I guess you would say typical for a young black kid, growing up without a father, single parent home, obviously mom doing most of the heavy lifting you know, um, me and my other brother, but I was surrounded by love. I was surrounded by love and, you know, affection. And, you know, even though my surroundings and where I was at might have been harsh and less than desirable, I was always surrounded by love and, and, and always encouraged to be the best that I can be by the people who had influence over me. And at what point did you meet Tupac? Um, It's hard to say when I met Tupac because I, we've known each other 
I I knew I know knew him all my life. So I don't even remember the exact day. It was just like your family, if you got a cousin or somebody, you know what I mean? Y'all just grow up together. It's just, it was family. Our families were closely connected in a few different ways. How many years apart are you guys? Tupac would, would, was uh, about three, three and a half, four years older than me. Okay. So, I, I mean, when you met, were you in Brooklyn when you guys met or? Yeah, New York City. New York Whether City. it was Brooklyn, the Bronx, Harlem, you know what I mean? We were, we were, uh, we were kids, so we was, what? We was we were wherever our parents were, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we didn't we didn't have much of a you know decision making on that, but yeah, New York City. Let's just say that. Okay. Yeah. So this would have been like when Tupac was like po doing the poetry and and all that type of stuff. Yeah, it, it could even be before that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was Tupac like always like the standout type of kid? Like you kind of like always seen. Like, did he, he had that, like, id factor? Absolutely. He definitely had a spark, a light, whatever you call it, the mojo. You know what I mean? The saucy, whatever it is, he had it. You know what I mean? From a, um, from a young, young, very young age. And was always our, you know, um, the younger, when I say our, I mean the younger kids in the family, like Gaddafi, myself, Castro. You know, we always looked up to him. He was always our big brother. At what point did he start to rap, or did you notice, like, he had a passion for music? It, around the time, he was calling himself MC New York. You know what I mean? He was, uh, but Pac was always just a natural performer, always in the music. It just, you know, I can't really pinpoint an exact age or whatever. It just was always there for as long as I can remember. What about the acting? Was that always there too? Always there. Just came naturally. Do you remember like any of his first rhymes or anything like that? Was I heard he nah, was battling? Man. I don't remember any of his first rhymes, man. But you know, he was uh, you know, LL Cool J was big around that time, and he was, you know, influenced by a lot of what LL was doing. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, that kind of MC, I guess he was. You would call him, you know what I mean? Real bravado, braggadocious type shit. What about battling? I heard he battled a lot. I wasn't privy to that. I don't, you know what I mean? Um, but we all did at that time. That was kind of like the, the 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 customary thing to do in hip hop in those earlier days, in the early 80s. You know what I mean? So, you know, whether you was having a battle on the street, you was having a battle in your house, hip hop was born and raised and bred it on competition. It's almost like a sport. At what point did you start rapping? Around the same time, you know what I mean? I started rapping in the early 80s. I started rapping and taking it very seriously, you know, by the time I was about 13 years old. Okay, Tupac moves to the West Coast out uh, over to Oakland or the Bay Area. Now, where are you at during this time? Are you still, are you in Atlanta at this time? No, I was in Minnesota, actually. I was in the Midwest. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now he moves out here and, you know, he starts going to high school and, uh, you know, he starts working with Digital Underground. Were you guys working together this time or? Nah, uh-uh. Okay. Nah, he was doing his thing and I was doing my thing. Still kids, you know what I mean? So, trying to figure it out. At what point did you guys link back up? 92. Link back up in 92. I had said Pac some of my demos, some of the stuff that I was working on. Um, me and Castro would, would uh, you know, always envision ourselves being in the hip-hop game and at that time he was he was getting you know his feet wet in the business going on the road with digital underground appeared on same song did juice and um yeah so i sent him some of my music he liked what he heard obviously and uh my career started in the summer of 92 flew out to oakland were you staying with tupac at the time yeah yep okay what was that like um, shit, man, we was, we was getting it out the mud, you know what I mean? Tupac was still very much a new artist, still figuring his way out in the music business and, uh, the movie business, you know, um, his star was on the rise, but there wasn't like gobs of money and, you know, bright lights and all this shit. It was really grind. It was a grind, you know what I mean? He was still grinding. We was grinding with him.
So this was right after Juice. A lot of people say the Tupac changed after Juice. How do you feel about that? Hmm. Like he became more Bishop. I mean, for me, I don't, I don't see where they would make that connection. You know what I mean? One, one is a character that he played, and another guy is a human being. And um, you know, those that usually comes from people that, in my opinion, really didn't know him that well. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.